What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here, back with another Week 12 college football preview right here on YouTube. Man, I appreciate y'all picking us and choosing us to get your college football content. If you are new, make sure to subscribe now, like the video, and comment your score prediction for this game below, and give me your thoughts on this game. But we have an extremely interesting Big 12 matchup this weekend going down in prime time, 7 p.m. Central time kickoff on Fox. It, man, uh, I'm excited for this one. Listen, Jones AT&T Stadium at night, top 10 team coming in, a Texas Tech team with nothing to lose. Give me that every Saturday, man. Number nine, Oklahoma State headed in to face Texas Tech in their home stadium. The Cowboys are a 10 point favorite right now and this game is going to have major implications on not only the big 12 championship race but potentially even the college football playoff race because a lot of experts think that if oklahoma state can win out they have a shot at the playoffs depending on what happens with those teams in front of them michigan state michigan ohio state all have to play some form of each other Alabama, Georgia still have to play. There's still a big question mark surrounding Cincinnati. What do we do with Notre Dame? The, the Cowboys are not dead. And we saw Michigan State in 2015 go from nine into the top four to get into the playoffs. So don't think that Mike Gundy's squad is not thinking about that. But let's set, let's set the table here, man, before we get into the game. The Cowboys enter this matchup 9-1, and 6-1 and one in the Big 12, and is currently riding a dominant three-game win streak, guys. They are outscoring their opponents on this win streak 142-23 to 23 right now. And a win this weekend will secure their spot in the Big 12 championship game, so I would expect a fully motivated Gundy squad this weekend go, going into going into Lubbock, man. But then you also have the Red Raiders. You know they got a they got an interim head coach, Sonny Cumbie. They entered six and four, three and four in the Big Twelve, but they're coming off an impressive upset win over Iowa State last weekend, and they have a chance to play a huge spoiler role in the Big Twelve with Baylor and Oklahoma State as their last two games, both top 12 teams. So you can see Texas Tech really impact this college football Big 12 championship race. So this starts this weekend. I expect a fully motivated and a hype crowd in Lubbock this weekend. Now, you look at this series. It was first played back in 1935. The Red Raiders right now hold a 23-22 to lead in the series with three ties. And the Cowboys won last year's matchup and have won 10 of the last 12 matchups between these two teams. So recent domination by, by Oklahoma State. But that's the table where we have all type of implications. We have two teams that are going to come in fully motivated, a great environment, a primetime matchup. You can't ask for anything more. Now, let's start with the keys to the game for Oklahoma State now. For me, it's going to lie in the rushing game. It's really been the key for this Cowboys offense this year. Spencer Sanders does, does an excellent job of working off of the play action. It accounts for almost 45% of his total dropbacks in this offense. And they really should have an advantage over Texas Tech on the ground that's allowing over 135 yards per game that ranks seventh in the big in the Big 12 right now. And when you look at what this Oklahoma State offense has done, they have the third best rushing attack in the conference with over 196 yards per game. And they also are averaging over two touchdowns rushing per game this season. And they've really leaned on an unexpected contributor. Jalen Warren transferred in from Utah State. And not many people thought he was even going to see the field or be a significant contributor this year. Due to injuries, he found his way to the starting role, and he's rushed for over 1,000 yards, over 5 yards per carry, and 10 rushing touchdowns this season. He's top four in rushing yards in the conference, and he's tied for sixth with, in rushing touchdowns. And then on top of that, you have the rotational guy in, Do in Dominique Richardson, almost 300 yards rushing, almost 6 yards per carry, and 3 rushing touchdowns. And then on top of that, you have the legs of Spencer Sanders, which you can never overlook. He is so dynamic outside the pocket 
almost 400 yards rushing and four rushing touchdowns for the quarterback. Now, the, this offense really thrives at rushing the ball in between the tackles. They re they really like to utilize their A and B gap runs to their advantage, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on the interior of this Texas Tech defense. When you look at their A to B gap rushing, they've rushed for over 1,100 yards, over five yards per carry, 10 touchdowns, 21 explosive runs, and these running backs do a great job of making people miss where they've generated over 700 yards after contact. So if you're Texas Tech, you know you have to you have to try to win the line of scrimmage battle or at least make it competitive, and you have to get these running backs down if you get if you get your hands on them. You cannot let Warren get loose on your defense because it could be a long day if he has one of these signature performances against your defense. Now, the other aspect to the run game and another X factor this weekend is is Sanders outside the pocket. Just on scrambles this year, he's rushed for over 200 yards, over eight yards per carry, and seven explosive runs. If you get pressure on Sanders, if you're Texas Tech, you have to keep him in the pocket, make him get rid of the ball, make him make a bad throw, or actually get that sack. And if you let him get outside the pocket and get out in the open space, you're going to have a long day if you're Texas Tech because Sanders can be a game changer with his legs as well. So that's that's the two aspects of the run game that Texas Tech is going to have to key on. On top of that, Sanders is going to have to create some explosive plays through the air off of this play-action attack. This Texas Tech team is going to put up points, so I expect Gundy to allow a little bit more freedom for Sanders to push that ball down the field, and that way this offense can generate some explosive plays to keep up with what they're going to see on the other side of the football. You look at what Sanders has done already, 14 touchdowns this year over 1,700 yards. But off of the play action is where he's at where, where he's at his best. He has a 90.1 passing grade off the play action, almost 800 yards, six touchdowns, only two turnovers, and almost 50 first downs generated off the play action. You're looking at a Tay Martin, a Brennan Presley to really have a big day against this Texas Tech secondary and Sanders being comfortable in the pocket and facing in, in these wide receivers seeing one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside due to the play action and the success of the run game could be key this weekend for Oklahoma State. Now, moving to the other side of the ball, though, man, for the Red Ra or the other side of the of, other side of this game with for the Red Raiders, it's going to lie on the arm of Donovan Smith. Everyone knows Texas Tech likes to throw the football. They have a solid rushing attack. We'll get into that, but Donovan Smith is going to have to be a playmaker. He is the X factor for Texas Tech this weekend. This, you know, this the identity of this offense has been to push the ball down the field, and I don't think this Red Raiders offense is going to be a, a be afraid to test the secondary of Oklahoma State. I mean, it's going to be a big test. Oklahoma State is the number one pass defense in the Big 12, allowing less than 200 yards per game through the air. But when you look at what the Red Raiders have done, They've went through three different quarterbacks before they got to Smith, and they're still second in the conference in yards per game through the air with almost 275 yards passing per game and still second in the conference with over nine yards per attempt, which means they, no matter who the quarterback is, they trust them to move the ball down the field. Now, Smith has done a great job. He's completed over 78% of his passes, almost 600 yards, four touchdowns, two rushing, and two interceptions. He's only played in about five games this season, but he had a huge performance last weekend to beat Iowa State in a crucial game for the Red Raiders to get them bowl eligible. Now, when you look at what Smith brings to this offense, it's really his deep ball. His deep ball has been more efficient than a Tyler Shaw or any of the other quarterbacks the Texas this Texas Tech team has used. Even though he's still a redshirt freshman, he's coming off a big injury, he's been a difference maker due to his ability to push the ball down the field. On deep passes, 20 or more yards down the field, he's completing them at a 64% clip, which is an elite ball placement at that, at that distance. Over 200 yards, three touchdowns, no turnovers, and a 95.2 passing grade. The
fourth of Smith's dropbacks over his limited action. So I expect the Red Raiders to air it out this weekend and trust Smith to go make some plays deep down the field. Now, yes, this team may be a pass-first team. They're still going to have to show some balance this weekend due to the talent they're going to see on this Oklahoma State secondary. But this, this defense ranks first in the Big 12 in rushing defense with less than 100 yards allowed per game. So they're going to have to show some balance and keep this defense guessing at what they're going to be throwing at them. Sir Roderick Thompson at running back has been solid over 400 yards rushing, nine rushing touchdowns. He's top eight in the Big 12 in rushing touchdowns. Xavier White and Taj Brooks are also going to be big parts of this offense. Now, Brooks has been very instrumental since he got since he got back from being nicked up with injury this year. He's averaging almost eight yards per carry and five rushing touchdowns. That's second in the Big 12 in yards per carry right now. So I'm expecting Brooks to be a, a focal point of this offense to take some pressure off of Smith down the field and make make Oklahoma State respect that run game so you could get some more favorable matchups on the outside. That's going to be a key for Texas Tech. Now, now that we got through the keys, the matchup to watch this weekend I think is going to be one that if you're a college football fan, even if you're not really invested in these teams, you're going to want to watch this. It's the Texas Tech wide receiving core against the South Oklahoma defensive back group. This is going to be a strength versus strength matchup, which is always exciting to watch. And it's really going to determine whether the Red Raiders are able to establish their type of game, if they can get into that pass-heavy shootout type of game where they really thrive. And these wide receivers are going to have to be playmakers. They are going to have to help their young QB out by creating separation, not dropping the football, and getting open for some explosive plays down the field because that's when this offense clicks at its best. Now, you look at this wide receiving core. They have multiple players that can take over a game. All these guys have to be on this weekend, win their one-on-one matchups, and be the X factors that they can be. I mean, you look at... You look at the three main guys they have. Miles Price, over 400 yards receiving, two receiving touchdowns, top 10 in yards per catch. Kalen Grieger, 37 catches, over 480 yards and one receiving touchdown. And Arik Azukama, 44 catches, over 680 yards and four touchdowns. And this guy is going to be the X factor. Fourth in the Big 12 in yards per game. Sixth in yards per catch, tied for eighth in touchdowns, and sixth in catches as well. Eric is going to have to play a big time role, and he's probably going to get the toughest matchup in terms of DB on him, but he's going to have to go make plays because Smith is going to default to him in a lot of situations and expect him to go up and get the ball. He's a big body guy that can be a playmaker and take over a game. So look for him to have a giant game this weekend. Now, why I picked this to be the matchup. This Oklahoma State secondary has been huge, has been a vital part of this team making this late season run to possibly the college football playoff and a Big 12 championship. I already mentioned they rank first in the Big 12 in passing defense, but they've only allowed six passing touchdowns all season long while having eight interceptions this year. So that is elite, elite statistical you know, production from the secondary. And when you look, they're they're five deep in terms of playmakers. Jared Bernard Converse, less than 50% completion percentage allowed for, against him in one-on-one coverage. Only one touchdown allowed in six pass breakups. And then you look at Christian Holmes, less than 130 yards allowed, three pass breakups and a pick. And then also Colby Harville Peel, one of the senior leaders of this defense. It seems like he's been at the school forever, man. One of my favorite players to watch. He hasn't even allowed a touchdown this year, three interceptions, and has allowed less than 150 yards. And then you also have Jason Taylor at safety, no touchdowns allowed, two picks and two pass breakups. And then Tanner McAllister can also be a game wrecker in the, in the secondary. Something has to give. If Oklahoma State can limit explosive plays down the field and force enforce some turnovers, Oklahoma State can really run away with this game. But the number one thing Texas Tech wants to do is establish their type of game. Make this a shootout, make this a high-scoring game, and put pressure on Sanders in this offense to have to put up a lot of points. 
Now, looking at this game, Ed, for me, this screams trap game. Prom time, 7 o'clock, Fox, a, a stadium that has a history of pulling big upsets, a team with nothing to lose, playing for an interim coach where you know teams always seem to play better for interim head coaches. Everything's pointing toward an upset. But for me, with how good this Oklahoma State defense has played, I think they're going to get a necessary amount of stops to win this game. I trust Jalen Warren to have a big game against this Texas Tech defense. And I do think it's going to be a close game early. Don't be don't be surprised if Texas Tech jumps out to an early lead. I just trust Oklahoma State to force a handful of turnovers and make a handful of stops that are going to be crucial in winning this game. So I have the Cowboys of Oklahoma State winning 38 to 28 over the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. So a 10-point win. I got a push on this game because Oklahoma State is a 10-point favorite. But 38 Oklahoma State, 28 Texas Tech this weekend in Lubbock. Guys, let me know your thoughts on this game. What matchups are you looking forward to, players to watch, and comment your score predictions below. I'd love to hear y'all's opinion. Also, like the video. And if you're new, smash that subscribe button right now, man. And we will be back with more previews. And there will be a playlist linked at the end with all our other Week 12 previews. That way you can, guys can catch those out. But until